Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders and in this video we are continuing with our Cannon Blast complete game series in Unity 3D. Now in our previous video we set up our cannon controller and we got our cannon firing as needed. Now in this video we are going to pull our project into Unity 5.6.2 which shouldn't really cause any issues, add an explosion to our cannonball, add a lifetime to our cannonball, and a condition to destroy our cannonball if it falls past a certain level in our scene. Now if I'm able to get through all of those quickly enough we're also going to add like a particle system to the cannonball and just make things a little bit prettier. Okay so I've actually gone ahead and opened up this project in Unity 5.6.2 which did cause a re-import but no issues popped up from this re-import which is awesome. So now we can move on to our next step. Okay so we're actually going to start off by opening up our cannonball script first. So let's go to project and inside of our assets scripts folder We'll see the cannonball script here. Now let's go ahead and open it up and add some functionality to this script. Okay, so the logic that we are actually going to be creating in this video isn't really that difficult to master or add to Unity, but it is some pretty important stuff. So up at the top, we're gonna to start by adding in our variables. We're gonna need a couple of variables for this cannonball, and we are actually going to come back in a later video and add more variables as well. But for now, let's just add the ones we need. So first, we're gonna add a public float that we can just call our lifetime and we're going to set this to an initial value of 5f. We are also going to add a public game object reference for our explosion. We're going to have a public float for our min height and we can just set this to like negative 20f initially and this variable actually is going to be used so that if our cannonball falls this low in our y position then we destroy the cannonball. So you may want to name this something than mi other than min height but it kind of makes sense to me so that's what I'm naming it. Okay coder so those are all of the variables that we are actually going to need for now. We're probably going to add more later but for right now that should do. Inside of our start function here we don't actually have to do anything yet. Now I'm leaving it in here because we may come back and add something later so I don't want to delete it and then have to re-add it. Now inside of our update function we actually need to do a couple of things but instead of writing all of those out inside of the update function I'm actually going to call a method that will handle a lot of that logic for us. So the method I'm going to call will be called status check and we can go ahead and create that method underneath our update method. So underneath our update method just create some space and say void status check. We don't need any parameters and the first thing we want to do is actually decrease our timer here. If we do not decrease our timer then our Cannonball will have an infinite life, so we definitely want to do this. So we'll say timer minus equals time dot delta time. Now we actually need to check timer's value. So we're going to say if timer is less than zero, then we want to destroy this object. But rather than using Unity's standard destroy function, I'm actually going to write one out myself just because I want to actually instantiate the explosion and then destroy the game object. And I have to call destroy several times in the script. So it just makes sense to do a method to handle this. So we're just going to call it destroy. So we'll just leave a comment here for now. Underneath our timer check, we have to do a check on our our transform dot position dot y. So underneath that we're going to say if our transform dot position dot y is less than our min height. And actually let's go ahead and change the name of this variable. I know I said it made sense to me but let's go ahead and change it to min y here just because I'm afraid that that might be a little confusing for some people. So let's change it to our min y so that way people know exactly what it's being used for. Okay now inside of this if it is less than our min y then we actually want to call our destroy function again so we can just create a comment there. Now we actually need to write out our destroy function. So underneath our status check function, we can just again create some space and we're just going to create a void destroy. We don't need any parameters here. And the first thing we actually want to do is instantiate our explosion. We're going to instantiate at our transform dot position and our transform dot rotation. Okay, cool. And the last thing we actually want to do here is destroy. We're just going to call it Unity's typical destroy function here. And we're going to destroy this dot game object. Okay, cool. So that should do it for this destroy function. Now we can actually just add it here. Again, no parameters. Okay, and inside of our update function, let's make sure we call our status check function as well. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and save this. Go back out to our scene. Hmm. Oh. I called it timer. We actually need to call it lifetime. My bad, guys. So change that to lifetime. Save it. That should clear up those issues. So it looks like everything is working here. Now we actually need to go to our project 
prefabs, click on the cannonball that we created in the last video, and we need to do an add component, and we're just gonna add our cannonball script here, and we need to actually add an explosion prefab for our reference, so what I'm gonna do is go to my standard assets inside of the particle systems prefabs, and Unity has actually given us an explosion prefab here, so if I click on my, whoops, I should have locked it. Okay, let's go back to prefabs really quickly. Click on the cannonball and lock our inspector. That should make it easier. And go back to prefabs here and just drag in the explosion. There we go. Now this should be ready to test, so let's go ahead and do that now. I'm actually gonna go ahead and unlock the, the inspector and let's go ahead and press play. So now let's rotate our cannon up a little bit, fire a cannonball. That one should actually go over. It did and it exploded, very cool. Now let's actually shoot this wall here, and I'm gonna do this because something's gonna happen that probably won't make a lot of sense to you guys. So if I shoot the wall, the cannonball moves along the wall, and it will probably, yeah, so it exploded down towards the end down there. Now what we can do is actually destroy our cannonball if it collides with a wall. But that's really personal preference for you coders. If you want to have your game set up so that you can like bounce the cannonball off of walls and try to get it to the platforms, then you can certainly leave it the way it is. I'm actually going to leave it that way. But if you did want to destroy it, then we would do an on collision enter call and then just call our destroy function. Now I can actually shoot like the pillars here. Whoa, it's aimed a little too high. <laughs> Let's try that again, there we go. Okay, so this is working pretty well. The one thing I'm noticing though is that our cannonball doesn't really look all that pretty while it's flying through the air. You know, so if I fire one that goes fairly straight, you know, it's not really adding anything to our scene or our, our game. It's just sort of rolling away from us. So let's go ahead and stop this. And we're gonna go back out to our cannonball prefab, which I already have selected in my inspector. Awesome, so we'll go ahead and actually lock this here. Actually, instead of locking it, what we're gonna do is go to our prefabs and drag it out into the scene. This will make it a little bit easier. Now what we're actually gonna do is add a smoke particle system to our cannonball. So again, if we go to standard assets, particle systems, prefabs, Unity has actually given us a smoke prefab here. So I can go ahead and actually drag that into the scene, and as you can see, that's the prefab that they've given us. So what I actually wanna do though is make this a child of our cannonball. And to do that, I can very quickly just drag it onto our cannonball, and now it is a child. Of course, the position is way off right now, so we, don't, we definitely don't want that. So let's just zero out the position there. So now our cannonball has this smoke prefab fab on it. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and fire a cannonball and see how that looks. Actually, we need to click on our cannonball and click apply to prefab here. If we don't click apply, then the smoke will not be added to our prefab. So let's go ahead and apply it. Very cool. Now let's go check our prefabs again, click on our cannonball and make sure that our cannonball has the smoke. Okay, very cool. It does. Now let's go ahead and press play and let's just fire another cannonball here. So I'm just going to fire it and that one's really just <laughs> just exploded right next to me. Okay, so now let's go ahead and shoot one that's fairly straight here. Okay, that's that's a little bit cooler, right? It's giving us, it's definitely making our scene a little look a little bit better, and a cannonball would actually have some smoke following it. So that's kind of cool. It would not continue to have smoke being emitted while it was slowly rolling away though. So one thing we may actually want to do is decrease the lifetime on that particle system because eventually the smoke will stop being emitted from our cannonball. So let's go ahead and stop this now and we're just gonna click on our smoke here. And as you can see, we've got looping checked here, which we don't actually want. So now I'm going to uncheck looping and I'm actually gonna drop my duration down to like three here, very cool. And now let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So as we can see, it's emitting, it should stop. So now it's stopped and it's gonna explode. So let's actually see one that's flying away. So I'm gonna fire one, there it goes. Pew. Okay, so three may be a little long still. So let's go ahead and stop that and we're gonna drop it down to 1.5 now. And let's try it one more time here. So again, it's emitting, stops very quickly now and it should explode. Cool. So let's aim up our cannon a little bit here and fire a cannonball. Pew. Okay, so I like the way that looked a little bit better because towards the end of the arc, the cannonball no longer had the smoke trail on it. One other thing I wanna do to just make this cannonball look a little bit cooler is actually add a trail renderer to our cannonball. Now, in real life, 
cannonballs don't necessarily have trail renderers, right? That would actually be the smoke that's being pulled from the explosion that launches the cannonball. But this isn't real life, this is a game. So we're gonna go ahead and add a trail renderer to our cannonball. And we can do that just by clicking on our cannonball over here. If we scroll down now, I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller. We can click on add component and we can go to effects and just add a trail renderer. Now there are a lot of parameters or variables that we can set up here, but for right now, let's just go ahead and see what it looks like. Actually, I am, I am gonna go ahead and uncheck receive shadows because we don't necessarily need this to receive shadows. Okay, that looks all right for now. Let's go ahead and check it out. So I'm gonna click on this cannonball and drag it. Okay, now that we've dragged it, we can see that that is definitely not what we want, right? That is a hideous, hideous trail renderer. And that's honestly because we don't have any materials added here. So if you click on materials, you can see that our material is set to none. So let's go ahead and go to our materials over here. We're gonna right click, create a new material, and we can just call this Canon ball trail and now inside of this we can actually change our shader to be a particle shader so let's try additive okay now let's actually play with the alpha drop it down a little bit and we're gonna increase this to like white okay now let's actually go back to our cannonball prefab here click on it and inside of our trail renderer we'll go ahead and lock this again we're gonna add a new material that will just be our cannonball trail material okay so now that's been added, let's go ahead and click on this cannonball again and just move it, move it. Okay, so again we can see that this doesn't really look all that great. I mean, for one, it's definitely way too wide. And another aspect of it is that I definitely want some opacity on the edges. So let's go ahead and reduce the width of it first. So if we look here under our trail renderer, we actually have a width and it just disappeared. So let's just drag this down a little bit, see what this does. And I actually like, let's go 0 0.0.15 here. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Okay, so now that we've got our width set up, let's go ahead and actually test this out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to press the start button again, because I actually wanna see a cannonball flying with a trail renderer behind it. So that, <laughs> that still doesn't look awesome, but let's see what it looks like. So I'm going to just shoot it. Okay, so that, that looks okay, but again, our lifetime is probably a little bit too long on this. We definitely don't want it want to have it still showing up once the cannonball reaches its destination. Although that is kind of cool and helps the player do some targeting. So let's stop this. We're going to go back to our trail renderer here. We're going to drop our time down to one. So this should very quickly destroy itself. And also one thing we can play with is the width. So what I can actually do is change up the width here. So if I drag this width down to zero and go up to uh, 15 here, let's go with the, there we go, right about 0.5. So we're gonna have it sort of increase pretty rapidly and then stay the same. So what we're gonna do is press play again aim our cannon and fire it okay and one thing you coders might have noticed is that now the width is basically backwards so let's go ahead and stop this click on our cannonball here and let's see what I mean here when I drag it the narrow end of our trail renderer is actually closer to the cannon which is not what I want so let's go ahead and fix that click on our trail renderer again we're gonna drag this up to 15 and this down. And I'm gonna go down to about 0.3 here. Then I'm gonna add another key that takes it down even farther to about the end. Okay, cool. Now I can actually go ahead and rotate this so that makes it a little smoother all the way across. So now let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Now if I drag it, okay, so now we've got some fairly crazy looking trail renders be occurring here. I mean, that looks pretty cool. So let's see what it looks like in game. So now we're gonna go ahead and press play. Again, we're gonna retarget our cannon a little bit. And fire. Okay, so I definitely like the way that's looking. It looks pretty cool. I wonder what happens when I shoot a wall with this though. Oh, <laughs> over the wall. <laughs> okay, try it one more time here. Here we go. I don't know where it's gonna end up. Oh, so it must have rolled off the end. Let's try it one more time on the wall. 
There we go. Okay, so yeah, I definitely like the way that looks. It looks like we still have a little bit of a uh, like tag going on after the cannonball. So again, if I click on this one and drag it pretty quickly, it's almost like we've got a little bit being left behind here. See right there? That's sort of happening. So let's see if we can't fix that. What I'm going to do is drag this to my 0.5, increase this a little bit, take this down to one and I'm actually going to change this so that we have our right tangent as a constant okay and now my left tangent I'm just gonna drag it up a little bit here move this back towards the center because what I think was happening is we might have had a little bit of a, an upwards curve here so let's go ahead and press play again and now let's try it out okay Okay, cool. That's looking a little bit better. We've still got a little bit of an issue there, but as I think as soon as we add our custom material to this, it's going to look even better. Okay, so now that we have that implemented, we are in a pretty good spot to end this video. This video is pretty short, but I don't want to expand on a lot of functionality across multiple videos. We are going to be adding additional functionality to our cannonballs in the future, but we have to set up some other items first to make that a little bit easier. So in our next video, we are going to be setting up the UI for this game. And we're also going to fix the trail renderer on our cannonball. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Okay, coders, I hope that you enjoyed that video. We are constantly adding new videos here on YouTube. Here are a few of our other tutorials just in case you want to keep on learning. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It allows us to continue making great content for you coders. And if you are feeling extremely generous, please check out our Patreon account. If you become a patron of Renaissance Coders, you can get access to our source code and our project files as well. Okay, coders, that's going to do it for this video. As always, thanks for watching.